Please remember that this matter should be viewed as a solicitation to trade. Trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Optimus Futures LLC is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, methodologies, newsletter, or similar service. We urge you to conduct your own due diligence. Now, here's your host, independent broker veteran and CEO of Optimus Futures, Matt Zimberg. Hey guys, this is Matt from Optimus Futures. Today I want to talk about the different components that a trader may need to trade futures. I think that the majority of people that approach futures trading are slightly overwhelmed because of the choices of platforms, because of the data feeds, the number of brokers, what they offer. And sometimes it's just very, very hard to make a decision. So what I try to do with potential customers who come to Optimus or even existing customers in helping them to get to an efficient way to trade futures, I discuss what are the different components and why they are so necessary. So before I talk about futures trading, let, let's talk about music for a minute, okay? So imagine that at this point, you would like to go and buy a stereo system. Now, you can buy a stereo system, for example, like Sony or Pioneer or Bose and have all in the same components right which is probably one of the easiest things to do so you have the amplifier the speakers the cd all the components are just one brand and you plug it in however as you wish to improve the sound quality of, of the sound that's actually coming out of the speakers one thing you might want to consider is components right so for example you can buy a component like macintosh right it's very well known in the stereo world and you might get some speakers a different set of speakers that are maybe handmade by some expert and so once you start putting those components together you may potentially i should say potentially find the sound quality also improves so now let's go back to the futures trading environment in the futures trading environment again you can get one component i mean one brand for everything one data feed one platform it's all the same company and sometimes that works and it can work really well. However, sometimes customers say, well, you know, I love the platform and I love the interface, but the speed is slow. Or they may say, you know what, I love the speed, but I don't like the way the interface basically is built. It's not comfortable. Some people can say, you know what, I want order flow displayed in a certain way or the dome displayed in a certain way. And this is where the different components come in. So for example, you can have a platform out there that you really, really like and then you attach a separate data feed to it, right? So let's talk about data feeds out there for futures trading. You have CQG, you have Rhythmic, you have CTS, and based on the location of where you live or your requirements, that's what we do. We actually take a platform and we plug in one of those data feeds for you. What does it do? One thing that it does is basically it has the ability to, to route most of the time directly to Chicago. So a lot of the customers that came to us, uh, sometimes they trade, let's say, futures and stocks on the same platform, but they're not because the majority of the firm that they're dealing with does stocks, they potentially may have a different routing system. So the execution, again, let's say potentially could be slower for some customers. So we choose a platform, which is the interface that the customer is comfortable with, right? And then we choose the data feed, and then we choose the clearing firm. Now, the clearing firm may matter for different reasons. I'm not going to elaborate it here. I usually discuss that with customers individually. But the two key components to remember are platform in data feed. So you have the interface and data feed. Now, are all data feeds equal yes and no they're all routed to the exchange but the data feeds that you might use might not use every tick that comes from the exchange so the average data also the data that you might use be on a uh, on a higher latency level sorry not lower but higher latency level and you want might want to reduce that and that's what certain data feeds provide they also not only provide execution but they also provide speed so talking about data, okay, so the data provides a number of things. Data provides, number one, it provides the risk management, 
So you might want to improve the display of your risk management with certain data feeds that also provides the data for execution, where basically you send your trades to the exchange. And it's also a way to display data, for example, on charts and dome. So your question may be, well, do I need to change? Well, that is something that you have to answer. We don't know. But if you feel that the interface is not right for you, or you feel that the speed of execution is not fast enough, or you feel that you're not getting um, all the data that you, you should be getting, then it's a problem because latency is important. Display is extremely important. And you want to work with a display that is comfortable. You want to work with a display that it's intuitive. And you also want to execute it in a timely fashion. And that's where we come in or any broker should, you know, no, have knowledge of platforms and data and how to put them together in such a way that it would make your life easier. Sometimes you just have to keep an open mind because when you're new to the business of futures, you don't know if you're getting the best data. You don't know if you're getting the best execution out there. Now, a lot of the times it's also your geographical location. Sometimes we can't do anything. If you live in a very remote area and the internet is not stable over there, in reality, it wouldn't make a difference. But if you're, you live in an urban place and there's good infrastructure, you should be getting all the data. You should uh, get, a, get to a point where you get a very stable environment. Now, this is also very important to remember. Data feeds could be hooked up to different devices. Let me give you an example. So I could provide you potentially with a username and password that you can use on a desktop application that you download, on a web-based application, or on an iPhone. All three of them could be the same. So you might want to hook up to your Android when you're outside of it and look at the positions or monitor the markets. We never recommend trading for mobile unless necessary. But this is what it allows you to do. So you can get something that you can apply across all three with the same username, password, and credentials. In any case, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm always here to advise you on technology execution. I try to keep up with everything that the industry throws at us. And if you think there is a potential here to improve something for you, please get in touch with us. I look forward to talking to you. And this is our second podcast on a Friday, right, Jake? Fourth, right? Fourth overall and second one on Friday. So again, I wish you a good weekend and uh, until the next time. Thanks. Please remember that this matter should be viewed as a solicitation to trade. Trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Optimus Futures LLC is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, methodologies, newsletter, or similar service. We urge you to conduct your own due diligence.